everyone, and welcome back to Drone U HQ. I have some news for you that once again was born from experience, unlike the other guys. Let's get real down and dirty. Remote ID, no one wants to comply. Why? Well, we don't want to be shot at in the field. Shocker. Now, one thing that I want to tell you is we came out with that video, check it out right here, do, 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 of how to not comply with remote ID essentially stating the rules in part 91 and part 107 for all the policy wonks out there, that uh, a remote pilot in command can essentially deviate from any rule in the FAA's book in the event of an emergency, right? And if you want to avoid an emergency, that's essentially what I was saying. Well, the FAA called me out at a recent conference, but refuses to answer any questions during their live streams with the line toters. I don't tote the line, I question everything because I honestly want what is best for you. Now, if you do wanna comply with remote ID, but you don't want the public to see your real time location, guess what? I have the solution for you. What am I talking about? I am talking about Pierce Aerospace's remote ID broadcast module. Now. What matters is if you do not want the public to see your real time position, then you have to pick up a Pierce Aerospace remote ID broadcast module. Even if your drone is remote ID compliant, like how DJI is going to last minute make the Phantom 4 Pro version 2 remote ID compliant, which I, I predicted three years ago. Um, if you have a drone that is remote ID compliant, I think you're still gonna want the remote ID broadcast module. Here's why. With the Pierce Aerospace broadcast module, what you can do is essentially have your drone, like set up your drone far from where you wanna stand, far from where you wanna be, far from where you wanna control uh, the actual aircraft itself. Turn on the drone, turn on the remote ID broadcast module, turn on your remote, everything, walk away, okay? What the broadcast module will do is record the takeoff position. That's what's being broadcast to the public. So once you take off, if you've walked a far distance away, a more clandestine distance or a safe distance away from people who are nefarious and have horrible intentions, then what you can do is literally take that drone off and walk far away. And what the drone is doing is broadcasting the home point or the takeoff position, not the real time pilot position. So this allows you to comply. If you look at, uh, I have it in my phone. If you look at remote ID uh, equipment compliance, they essentially say that it must be constantly broadcasting the drone's position and that essentially the drone pilot must have visual line of sight at all times. That is what's in the compliance, okay? Now there's supposed to be certain messages. You're supposed to have um, the declaration of compliance, it, it comes with the Pierce Aerospace stuff. Um, I'm telling you, if you want to comply with remote ID, but you do not want your pilot position seen in real time, Pierce Aerospace remote ID module, get it. Just the important thing, do not put the module below your vision positioning sensors or your downward obstacle avoidance sensors, no matter which drone it's on. On these Phantoms, it will cause the drone to automatically crash. Important information for drone pilots, right? Here at Drone U, we want the best for you. If you want more great content and you want to be a better pilot and master confidence than all the other wonks out there, you've got to check out thedroneu.com for the largest experience-based library of drone classes to turn your passion into profit. Clearly, I love to fly, which is why I love giving you the highest quality of information. Thanks again for joining us here at Drone U HQ for how to comply with remote ID. Bye. Bye-bye.